Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to our Mathematician of the Week. Now, her name is Sofia Kovalevskaya, but in Russian names, actually, they say three names. So, Sofia Vasilevnaya Kovalevskaya. Um, I studied Russian for a couple of years in college, so... It's cool. Anyway, um, she was born in 1850 and lived till 1891. So she died kind of young, but boy, did she make an impact while she was here. Um, she's an extraordinary woman. Um, she was not only a great mathematician, but she's also a writer and an advocate of women's rights in the 19th century. That means the 1800s. It was her struggle to obtain the best education available which began to open doors at universities to all women. Uh, in addition to her groundbreaking work in mathematics, um, in addition, her groundbreaking work in mathematics made her male counterparts reconsider their archaic notions of women's inferiority to men in such scientific arenas. Uh, I think that's a pretty powerful paragraph, though. Uh, she deserves a, deserves a place in history of mathematics as she was the first... Not only was she the first Russian female mathematician of extreme notability, she was the first woman to obtain a doctorate in the modern sense at all. Um, she was the first woman to hold a university chair, third woman in history to become a university professor, and she was also the first woman to appointed a full professor, let's see, First to work for a scientific journal as editor. Whew, that's a lot of firsts. She broke so much ground. Best woman. She achieved these triumphs despite heart, harsh resistance. For example, her father forbade her to study mathematics, but she secretly studied at night when the family slept. Have any of you secretly studied math while the family was sleeping because they didn't want you to study it? I don't think so, right? It's a different world that we live in now. But that's what she had to do. Have you, have, you, have you ever had anything that makes you want to secretly do it? That much? That much passion about learning something? Think about it. Russian women could not live apart from their families without written permission of the father. Thus, she was forced to marry so that she could go abroad to further her education. She studied in Germany, not as an official college student, but under the private tutoring of a professor who, after a series of impressive math solutions, was convinced she was worth the effort. She eventually earned a doctorate after writing and publishing three mathematical papers. But then, because she was a woman, no one would hire her as a professor. Five years later, after the birth of her daughter and her husband dying, she was given a trial lecture series at a university in Sweden. After five years, she gained a tenured position at the university. That means that they've hired her permanently, basically, and was appointed an editor for a mathematics journal. She also did a lot of other writing as well. So at this time, she published her first paper on crystals. So something about mathematicians and those rocks and crystals, right? And in 1885, she was also appointed chair of mechanics. At the same time, she co-wrote a play because, you know, mathematicians don't have to do just math uh, with a friend. Um, due to the death of her sister and the loss of a new love, in 1891, she became ill with depression and pneumonia. And that's eventually what she passed away from. Um, she's been known as the greatest woman scientist before the 20th century. And I like this, uh, that historian mathematic, history, historian huh, of mathematics Roger Cook wrote about her. He says, the more I reflect on her life and consider the magnitude of her achievements set against the weight of the obstacles she had to overcome, the more I admire her. For me, she has taken on a heroic stature achieved by very few people in history. Very few people in history. Come on, guys. To venture, as she did, into academia, a world almost no woman had yet explored, and to be consequently the object of curious scrutiny, while doubting, while a doubting society looked on, half expecting her to fail, 
took tremendous courage and determination to achieve as she did at least two major results of lasting value to scholarship as evidence of a considerable talent developed through iron discipline. I mean, I get chills when I read that. She really is a hero. Okay, and then I loved this that she wrote later in life. She wrote, it is impossible to be a mathematician without being a poet in soul. And that's normally not two things you put together, but that's what she felt mathematics was. So, Sofia Kovalevskaya, I salute you. She's awesome.